All right, I have what you've been asking for in my head. All Creed fragrances ranked. Hey, fragrance family, I'm Daver and I'm a fragrance bro. Of course, your best source for everything fragrance related. Today, I have a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. It's taken a lot of um, effort and time to make this. And that, of course, is all the Creed fragrances ranked. Now, of course, I have a ranking list that I'm gonna be going through. I have it on my iPad here. And we're gonna go through all of these. I'm gonna just kind of briefly give my thoughts on all these. And I'm gonna rank these as far as must own or to buy or I'll keep it or forgettable or trash. You'll see in just a minute. Now, I love Creed. I'm a Creed fan. Boy, I really like what Creed is doing, and I've always pretty much liked most of what Creed makes, but some are better than others. So today we're going to be talking about some that I think are really worth it, and we're just going to go through all the lists on uh, good, bad, and ugly. Also, today I want to mention that today's video is sponsored by Micro Perfumes, a company that I really like. They sell a lot of boutique and mainstream fragrances at a great price. They have samples and decants of everything that they sell, which I think is great. The decants are really great. They come in a little pop-up, a little atomizer. I got a lot of the samples I'm going to be trying from them, so definitely check them out. Of course, they're adding more to their selection every day, so definitely see if they have what you're looking for there. I had to supplement some of my choices from Creed's website themselves. But I have everything here. Now, all the fragrances that I'm listing here are fragrances that are from Creed's website. So the official kind of now fragrances that Creed sells. There's a lot of other fragrances that maybe were discontinued or Creed doesn't make anymore, like ACA Aluminum and Green Valley, stuff like that. So if you're wondering why the fragrance that you're thinking of isn't listed, that's the reason. It's because it's not on their website. Now, also, there's one fragrance that I was just not able to get, and that's Royal Service. Royal Service is on on their website, even though it's sold out. And it's just ridiculous to get a hold of. I've looked everywhere. It's really, really expensive. And so um, I wasn't able to get it or find it. So that's one that I just couldn't have here. Other than that, I have everything uh, that is represented on their website here today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. And then of course, they're going to put Aventus at the very front. And Creed Aventus is probably their best seller. I think it's probably one of the most popular fragrances that Creed has. Of course, pineapple and birch, smoky, great. To me, this is not a must own, even though I really like it, but it would be like a two buy. I think it's not their S class for me, but it is two buy, but it is the very, very top. I think that it's, this is really hard. I almost want to put it in must own. So I'm going to put it here for now. We'll see. I might change my mind here. All right, next is Jardin de Malfi. Now, Jardin de Malfi is part of their, I forgot what they call it, but they have like an exclusive line of fragrances. Jardin de Malfi is one of those. I think it's okay. I'm going to put it in. I'd keep it. If someone gave it to me, I'd definitely keep it, but it's not one that I would probably go out and buy for sure. All right, next is Pure White Cologne. Pure White Cologne, I think is phenomenal. Pure White Cologne is amazing. So this to me kind of smells like a really, really very upscale, rich, smoother version of maybe chrome, that type of thing. It is soft and citrusy, musky, but done in the most perfect way. To me, this is, I'm gonna put two by. I'm gonna put it in the A class there, two by. I think it's just that good. It's, it's phenomenal. That's so good. That's really good. All right, next is Sublime Vanille. Sublime Vanille, of course, is supposed to be a very sublime vanilla scent. <laughs> sublime Vanille is amazing. If you like vanilla scents, this is one of the best that I have ever tried. It is that vanilla, that Madagascar type of vanilla, rich, sweet, kind of powdery and musky almost. It's so good. To me, this is must own. I think it's that good. So the first one going in must own is Sublime Vanille. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely up there. All right, next is White Amber. Now, this is one that I had not tried before. Creed actually sent me some of the fragrances from their kind of exclusive line here. This is one that was in that kind of sample set. White Amber almost smells like nothing. Like, it has almost no smell. It's, I believe, supposed to be kind of reminiscent of maybe like white ambergris, like really fine, a fine grade of ambergris. You have different grades of ambergris, black, gray, and then white. This, I think, is supposed to be kind of reminiscent of that. It is on the muskier side. It almost has no smell to me. I mean, maybe some people might get more out of it than I do, but to me, this is not great. I mean, it's worse than forgettable. I think this is trash. I think this is very, very bad. I would definitely put it there. I mean, it is forgettable, but I think it's I think it's borderline trash. All right, last in their kind of exclusive line is white flowers. White flowers, of course, is supposed to smell like white flowers. 
<laughs> so probably lots of jasmine and tuberose and gardenia, that type of thing. And yeah, I mean, it smells like that. It smells fine. Um, this is one that Creed, sometimes they do, they do really good with kind of one note fragrances. Sometimes they don't. And this is one where they don't. To me, this is just forgettable. I think if you like the white flower type of fragrance, I think you might like this better than I do. It's definitely not trash. You can definitely smell quality there, but it's it's just on the forgettable range for me. All right, next is one that I don't have to smell at all because I already know how it smells, and that's Green Irish Tweed. Green Irish Tweed, phenomenal green scent. Uh, soapy, green, musky, um, just a wonderful masculine scent. Clean, fresh. It is so perfect. To me, this is must-own. I mean, so good. This is going in front of Sublime Vani. We'll see if it even gets dethroned as predominant uh, choice here. Green Irish Tweed, one of their best. I think even better than Aventus. Definitely check out Green Irish Tweed. It's amazing. So versatile, so fresh, so great. Next is Silver Mountain Water. Silver Mountain Water is one of those sleeper scents from them, I think. I know that it has a crowd out there that really likes it, but I think more people really need to catch on to how good Silver Mountain Water is. It is very clean. It has almost this uh, soapy, almost inky type of citrusy type of thing. It's really interesting and I really like it. I think this also smells great on ladies as well. So I think this is good for men and women. It's advertised as more of a male scent, but I think this is great on women too. But I'm gonna put this in the two buy list. I'm gonna put it just past Aventus right there. Maybe not must own for me, but it is definitely in the to buy list right there in the A class. Next is Erolfa. Erolfa came out a few years ago and it was one of those fragrances that was, I think, inspired by Erwin Creed and his family uh, sailing in the Mediterranean, I believe it was. Something like that, something, something to that effect. The name is supposed to be kind of a mixture of Erwin Creed and I believe his daughter and his wife, I think. And I think one of them is Olivia and one of them is maybe Fatima or something. I'm not really sure the name, so apologize. Apologies if I get them wrong there, but I think it's something like that. Erolfa is okay. I think it is a pretty decent citrus scent that has notes of citrus and some salty notes in there as well. We're going to get into this in a little bit, but to me, I think this is kind of almost... It, to me, it's very similar to Millicene Imperial, but maybe, maybe a touch better. So to me, this is kind of forgettable. So I'm going to go in the forgettable route. Under white flowers, a little bit forgettable there. Next is Viking Cologne. And to me, I, I really liked Viking Cologne. I know it's a flanker of the original Viking. Viking Cologne to me kind of, I think perfected it. And it has that kind of oak mossy, old school masculine type of thing with some citrus on top. I think it's really good. It's not the best thing that Creed has, but I think it's really good. I'm gonna put this in the, I keep it because I did, I kept it. I'm gonna put it above Jardin de Malfi right there. I think it's really good. I think it is one of the fragrances that I think is worth owning from Creed. Creed gave it to me for review. And if it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't have gone out and bought it necessarily because I think it's very good, but it's not something that would be on my to buy list, honestly, but it is one that I definitely wore a lot and I would wear more. So I'm going to keep it. So there it goes. I keep it. Next is Aventus Cologne, and this is another one that people were really excited about trying when it first came out. Of course, it has to live up to Aventus, and I think unfortunately it doesn't. It is one of those fragrances that came out as a flanker of Aventus, and it's not really as good as Aventus. It shares a couple of similarities to Aventus at the top, and then changes into a different beast. I think that's partly intentional. I don't think they wanted it to smell exactly like Aventus. Why would they? But um, I think that the changes that they made weren't that great, and it kind of smells a little bit more like Chanel. Nail Allure Ohm Sport in a lot of ways, uh, mixed with maybe Aventus. So I don't think it's that great. I think it's forgettable. Um, maybe a little bit better than White Flowers and Arolfa up here. So I'm going to put it in right there in the top of the uh, forgettable class there. Oh boy. <laughs> Next is Millicene Imperial. Millicene Imperial, uh, one of the most beloved fragrances from Creed, I think, in the community. People really love it for that watermelon, salty type of thing. To me, I don't think it's that great. I think it doesn't do watermelon great. It doesn't do salty that great. It just smells bland, and I don't think it's good at all. In fact, I think it's trash. It's better than white amber, that's for sure. So you got that going for it at least, but it's not great. It's trash. Sorry, everyone. I, I think it's just not that great. But it has one of the coolest bottles, which that's a shame. It has just an amazing cool bottle. Next is Viking. Viking was another one that came out after Aventus, and people were really looking forward to it as another one of the male fragrances in the line. It had kind of a similar aesthetic to the bottles as Aventus, so people were really thinking, what could it be like? Um, I think it was kind of a flop. I think it was okay. I don't think it's great. It has a very aromatic kind of Shepra type of thing with some mint on top. I don't think it smells particularly great. 
and it has almost like a salad type of thing, which I don't really like. So to me, I'm, I'm going to put it in forgettable. It's definitely better than Aventus Cologne. So we'll put that at the top there. Oop. Right there. Top of the forgettable category right there. Oh yeah. Next is Royal Oud. Royal Oud, phenomenal fragrance by them. And it does have some Oud, but it's not really a, an overt Oudy type of scent. It is um, almost... I don't know what you'd call it necessarily, but I get almost like this really masculine, almost tobacco-like quality to it that I really like. But to me, it is must-own um, under Green Irish Tweed, but up there for sure. To me, it's one of the best fragrances for the colder weather that they have. It's phenomenal. It is one of the most formal fragrances. Um, I get so many compliments when I, when I wear it. It is just that good. So yeah, Royal Oud, worth every penny. Next is Original Vetiver. Original Vetiver is another one of those kind of underdog fragrances in the line. I think it's very good. It's one of the fragrances that I know a lot of the salesmen at the Creed Boutique say that they really recommend. And I think it's really worth it. But I don't think that it is at the top of my two-buy list. So for me, it's more of a I'll keep it type of thing. I think it's um, not as good as Viking Cologne, but maybe better than Jardin de Malfi. So I'm going to put it right there. Original Vetiver, very good. Very, very clean and soapy. It has this little thing in there that has a little pine in there that it smells a little bit different. I like it a lot. It's supposed to smell similar to um, Mugler Cologne, but I think it smells a little better. All right, next is Original Santal. I really like Original Santal. Spicy with cinnamon and sandalwood. It has some juniper in there as well. Some people say it smells like yope. I don't really think so. It's very, very good. Um, I don't think it's ne necessarily must own, but it is a two buy list for sure. Not as good as Aventus, better than Silver Mountain Water. So right there, Original Santal, great for colder weather, uh, great for that kind of date type of atmosphere, cuddly type of thing. Fantastic. All right. Citrus Bigger Rod is next. And then Zest Mandarin is next after that. I'm going to mention those side by side because I think both of these are forgettable. I think these are not great at all. Um, these are just okay. They had kind of a cologne kind of line that they released not too long ago, and they put these in there. Citrus Bigger Rod is just kind of a very by the books kind of citrusy type of hard citrus type of scent. Typical Italian style citrus scent. I think it's just okay. It's not great. Zest Mandarin is kind of different. I think it has some redeeming qualities. So I'm going to be, it's going to be better than um, uh, Citrus Bigger Rod, but Zest Mandarin is, has almost like a metallic type of thing. And I think it's pretty interesting, but I still probably wouldn't buy it for sure. And I probably wouldn't keep it either. I'd sell it. Next is Himalaya, and Himalaya is a truly underdog scent here. Himalaya is fantastic. This actually, whenever I smelled it again, I really realized how much I just really want this. So to me, it's going to go on my to-buy list for sure. I think it's going to go above Pure White Cologne. I'm going to put it right there. Uh, Himalaya is a citrusy type of scent that is, I would say that it is on the icy type of side. It has this almost um, snowy, icy thing. And maybe that's all just suggestion from, from the name, but it has something in there that is kind of in that kind of realm. And I really like that a lot. Softer citrusy, really excellent. Royal Mayfair is next. And Royal Mayfair is another one that um, I really like. Royal Mayfair is a re-released version of Windsor. Windsor was one of their uh, vaulted fragrances that Creed had. Whenever they unvaulted it, it was really, really expensive, but it smelled fantastic. Windsor, I think, is one of the absolute best fragrances that they've ever made. Royal Mayfair came out. It's not as good as Windsor, but it's still very, very good. It has just this really cool rose and eucalyptus thing that I think smells phenomenal. It is just absolutely great. I'm going to put it in the uh, two buy list for me. Put it above pure white cologne, uh, maybe above Himalaya, and I'll put it above Silver Mountain Water right there. Royal Mayfair, amazing scent from them. Really great. And if you like this, there's some there's some products that Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements makes like deodorant, and soaps, and shampoo. And you can get that in the Royal Mayfair scent. It smells incredible, just like it. Uh, but definitely go check out their products. Some of the best products out there with one of the best scents that Creed makes. It's phenomenal. Next is Bois de Portugal. And Bois de Portugal is another one that I've, I've heard a lot about from people who really like it. And it's a, an old school masculine type of scent that I think is a very, really big masculine Shepra type of scent. It's got oak moss and um, I believe some patchouli in there. It's dark. It's rich, woody. It's really good. To me, it's not a must buy. I would say I would keep it. I'm going to say it's uh, maybe above original vetiver. So right there, I keep it. It's in the B tier for me. Next is Tabaron Millicene. And this is another one that um, is really under the radar. And I don't really think it's that great. You definitely have to check it out. And I think it's just okay. Um, but to me, it's kind of on the forgettable side. Better than Arolfa, better than White Flowers. 
Um, better than Aventus Cologne. So I'm going to put it right there. Tabarone Millicene. Royal Water is next. And this is another one that um, I really have grown to like a lot. This is another fragrance that is in the citrusy realm, kind of on the softer side. I believe someone said it was one of the princes of England, one of their signature scents. I think it's very good. Not on the to buy list, but I would definitely keep it. And I'm going to say this is, I want to say this is on the top of the I'd keep it. I think that's, that's really excellent. Here, move over. Move over. Can I move it over? There we go. So yeah, at the top of I'd keep it is Royal Water. Really excellent citrus scent. <laughs> Next is Neroli Sauvage. And this is on the opposite end. This is a more of the hard side of citrus, Italian citrus style, if you know what I mean, like hard lemon, rindy type of thing. It's okay, but it's, it's nothing special. So Neroli Sauvage is going to be forgettable for me. Um, probably worse than White Flowers. Is it worse than Arolfa? Yeah, I think it's worse than Arolfa. Not as worse, not as bad as the other two down there. Next is Virgin Island Water. Everyone apparently likes Virgin Island Water. <laughs> it's got coconut and lime. It's very beachy, that type of thing. To me, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it's okay. I've smelled a lot of things that are on the cheaper side that smell like it. Um, but I don't think it's forgettable. I think that a lot of people like it and I might keep it. So, but it's going to be in the very bottom of I'd keep it down there. Okay. All right, so green neroli, iris tuberose. I'm going to mention those together again because, again, these are just forgettable for me. I think they're just okay. They're not that great. Green neroli, another one that is kind of similar to neroli sauvage, that just neroli bright type of thing. I don't think it's that great. Iris tuberose, if you like iris, I think it's, it's okay. Um, I'm going to put this better than... Um, yeah, I'll put it up there. Iris tuberose is okay if you like iris and tuberose, that type of thing. I don't think it's that great, though. Vetiver geranium, though, is next. And I think that one is pretty good. And I would keep it. Um, I would say it's better than Virgin Island Water. Vetiver geranium, vetiver. Geranium, minty, that type of thing. I think there's some patchouli in there as well. And it was re-released for this line. I think it was part of their tea collection or something. But they re-released it in this, in this citrusy type of thing. And it really works here. But I think this is the only one in that collection that's really worth owning. Spice and Wood is next. Spice and Wood, um, definitely top tier as far as their exclusive line. Not a must own for me. Um, maybe not a to buy list, but I would keep it. So this is going to be uh, probably better than right there. Yeah, better than Bois de Portugal for me. And not as good as Viking Cologne. Spice and Wood, very good, but not a must buy. But it's excellent. Spice, Woods, Apple, um, really good, really smooth. A lot of the, the collection in that exclusive line is really well done, uh, but I think some of them are just smell better than others. Spice and Wood is one of the good ones. All right, next one, it's all black. I don't know how I did that, but I think it's Rose de Te Bulgar, Bulgare or something like that. Anyway, this one is good. Um, it's not great. I think it's going to be, and I keep it probably above Virgin Island Water right there. Yeah, there you go. Fleur de Rose Bulgar. So this one is very rosy, very, very rosy. And um, I think it's maybe better on ladies if you like that type of thing. A little bit more on the powdery side, but yeah, there it is. So that is all of the creeds ranked. What do you think? How did I do? <laughs> do you disagree? I know there's some that you really disagree with. I want to hear all your juicy disagreements in the comments down below. And what are some that you really like? What are some that you really love? What are some that you really hate? Let me know some of the some of your rankings down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts there. And also, don't forget to go to Micro Perfumes. I'll have a link down below to them. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Great selection of uh, niche and designer and boutique and mainstream type of fragrances there. Really excellent. Lots of great samples and decants. Couldn't have done it without them. So thank you so much, Michael Perfumes. Of course, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I love you for it. I'll see you next time. I'm Dave with Fragrance Bros. Bye.